What's going on you guys, Uncle Jesse here. Uh, yeah, unfortunately I broke my original OG CR10 that I purchased almost a year ago in February. I think is when I purchased it after seeing it from Preston over at Press Reset. Uh, yeah, ended up buying my own and it's been rocking and rolling for the better part of a year now and I just hardcore broke it and thankfully I had some backup supplies thanks to the folks over at tinymachines3d.com and I just wanted to make a video here showing you guys how I'm going to fix this one issue. I'll probably do a follow up video on how I fixed the secondary issue that I did not have the backup parts for because I was not anticipating this type of issue happening. But uh, I just want to share this with you guys here and hopefully it helps any of you out there that have a CR10 and run into a similar issue. Also I just noticed that the <laughs> road mic here is directly in frame so uh, yeah we'll have to correct that Ooh, double double extra thing here uh, this is not anybody by sponsored or anything like that by tiny machines I actually purchased a whole bunch of gear from them uh, in anticipation of my printer failing or having issues like this for a day just like this that I could share it with you guys. Um, I absolutely love those guys. Chris over there does a fantastic job of customer support uh, and providing you with basically everything you might ever need for your CR10 and getting it back up and running or if you wanna do upgrades on the actual machine or if you're interested in purchasing other 3D printers, they're now carrying other additional 3D printers, which is pretty exciting. But I'll talk more about that later. Let's check out the issue and how I'm gonna fix it. All right, so here's my original CR10. It is way dirty. I took out those little orange rubber things here a very long time ago because I don't like how they necessarily looked and I wanted the all black style. This is pretty much a non-modded version of the CR10. The only thing that I've really changed is the wheels, the wire support on the back. Uh, I've installed one of these upgrade, uh, upgraded uh, PFT tubes, the Capricorn cables here. And then, um, yeah, I think that's really it on the CR10 itself that I've done. Oh, sorry, I'm printing on glass here. I have a variety of different print breads that I switch between. Right now, I'm on a big uh, mirror, this isn't glass, sorry, mirror. I'm on a mirror kick. These you can pick up over at Home Depot Lowe's. If you're not already doing this, go to your local hardware store. You should be able to buy a pack of mirrors for super cheap, like under 20 bucks for a handful of them. And yeah, they work perfect because they're super flat. Well, anyways, the issue that I ran into is I ended up clogging my extruder, which I, you know, everybody's run into from one time to another. Um, but what ended up happening was I was trying to remove the, uh, the nozzle from the extruder, which I've done a dozen or more times. And in fact, now I'm actually just removing the nozzle and swapping it out anytime I get a clog with a fresh nozzle. Uh, I purchased, I don't know, like 40 or 50 extra nozzles <laughs> in bulk over on Amazon. And uh, yeah, what ended up happening was I was trying to get this off and apparently this wasn't on secured or maybe it's just rotted through. I'm not quite sure what the heck happened, but I ended up snapping this, completely snapping it. And yeah, my extruder is completely screwed, absolutely screwed over. So I have a few options on what I can do to actually resolve this issue. And the first one that I'm gonna show you is my go-to that I have been anticipating this happening for some time now. And that is, I'm gonna swap this out, the entire unit with a replaceable quick swap extruder hot end unit, if you wanna call it that. It's basically the whole component, fan and all, everything, all in one, pre-wired, ready to go. All I have to do is unhook these, hook in the new one, plug it in, re-level everything. It's gonna be good to go. All right, and here is the plug and play nozzle assembly option. This is what I went for. This costs about 50 bucks over on tinymachines3d.com. And again, it just gives you the option here that has everything ready to go, just like when you bought your CR10 and needed to hook everything up. I just literally have to unconnect all of this stuff and plug it in, re-level, and just double check that it's all heating correctly and it should work correctly. 
Um, the other option that they do offer is just the nozzle assembly, so not the plug and play option. That's gonna require, it's gonna be cheaper, which is great, but it will require you to do soldering of wires. So if you're comfortable with that, go for it. If you're not, maybe you're like me, I don't wanna deal with any of that. Sure, I can solder, but I'd rather spend a little bit more and be able to just basically swap these out within minutes versus setting aside an evening to solder some wires and reconnect everything, make sure I did it correctly. So it's all personal preference. All personal preference and mine is time, time oriented. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna show you just real quickly. I'm gonna just swap these out and we'll test it out and get it back up and running. All right, I got it all hooked up here. That only took a few minutes to do, which was absolutely great for me. Uh, so what I'm gonna do next is just power it on up here and just double check that everything's heating up. Uh, the fan's working, so that's a great sign here. Um, and then just power it up here. I'm gonna do prepare preheat PLA. And it looks like it's heating up, which is great. So just doing the preheat option here and it looks like the extruder is starting to heat up. The next thing I'm gonna do is just make sure it's level and then I'll get a print going, hopefully. And that's gonna take a little bit of trickery here. Uh, but that's the second portion of this video that I'll actually pick up with another video after I get this next part. So I have some replacement parts um, from, uh, from Tiny Machines for occasions like this. Uh, what I did not have though is a board on the inside for the SD card reader, which sucks. So normally I have an extension here that sticks out of it and then I can put the card in and it prevents me from having to jam it into this little slot and potentially lose the micro SD card. And then I'm just dealing with this. Unfortunately, in some sort of a freak accident, I, I had this printer not originally up here. I had it sitting on the ground. I ended up kicking this, not paying attention, kicking it. And now this slot now no longer will retain any card that is inserted into it. So I can try and stick it in here, but nothing, nothing clicks, nothing sticks. So what I have to use is the, uh, the port here on the side somewhere, there's a port here. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, the USB section here right next to it and hook that up to my laptop to have any prints run directly on this. So it's a little bit of a pain, but what's great is uh, I'm gonna be getting a new board from Tiny Machines and I'll be doing another video on that and how I can swap that out, which will repair this issue is along with hopefully give it a few other little improvements there. So I just wanted to share this with you guys on how, if you run into the same issue, how you can very quickly and easily swap out your whole nozzle assembly with a, another nozzle assembly that you can pick up from Tiny Machines 3D. Uh, yeah, absolutely love these guys. Again, Chris over there, him and his brother just do absolutely amazing sport. If you're on the CR10 Facebook group, which if you're not, you should be, uh, everybody over there absolutely raves and loves about these guys as well. Again, their customer support is by far better than anyone that I've ever dealt with. They're super responsive to any emails or questions. Uh, also, it's just some cool information. They are now starting to carry some additional printers beyond the CR10. They now have the Creality, what is it, the 2020, and now the Ender. And then I also heard from uh, some conversations with Chris that they're gonna be selling some of the WAN How printers very soon, which is pretty exciting, as well as the Formbot Raptor. Uh, also the Formbot T-Rex as well. Really cool stuff coming out of the guys over at Tiny Machines. And again, I'll have links down below to any of this stuff. Uh, I don't get a kickback or anything on this. I'm just, again, love supporting these guys. Uh, love everything that they're doing. And they, uh, I purchased some stuff from them and it helped me out in a huge pinch to be able to get this machine back up and running. I now need to get this thing leveled and printing and get working on a new Red Hood mask. Stay tuned for more info on that because I'm going to have a little bit of a Red Hood challenge coming up soon. 
pretty fun. Thanks again for watching, you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this. I love sharing with you guys not only the great and cool stuff, but also some of the issues that I run into and how I'm solving some of those issues, especially with these printers, because as you guys might be aware, printers aren't exactly the most reliable thing just yet. You do run into clogs and issues and things break and break down and need to be replaced. And uh, thankfully there's great folks out there like Chris and his uh, crew out there to help make this process as easy as possible. So again, just want to say thanks again for watching you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye now. I finally got a little remote for my camera. I don't know why it's taken me like a year and a half to buy a remote so that I don't have to walk over to the tripod, hit record, then come back, make sure everything's in focus. I don't know. Crazy, right?